Welcome back to Aquatic Australia. Today we're diving from the dive vessel Bellaton Jack in Marmion Marine Park, Scarborough, Western Australia. Today we're diving close to the shore rather than offshore rock nest. The visibility is nice in the reef, but deeper off the sides on the sand there is a layer of uh, lower visibility. Brian's Bommy is a conical lump of rock with sand all around. Two butterfly fishes called Western Talmers circle each other as if dancing. Then they continue the patrol of the reef. All over the reef, there are a number of good holes that are cray territory. Today, there are quite a few in the holes. We pass the two Talmers again, continuing their reef patrol, looking for food. Lizzie spots an interesting fish, sitting camouflaged on the edge of a ledge, a venomous scorpion fish. Their bright red-orange colour makes them a dull brown and helps them blend into the reef underwater, but shine a light on them and their colours just pop out. Their dorsal fins and gill covers have spines that can inject venom to defend themselves. The spines are shown here, but if you don't mess with them, these pretty little fish are harmless and sit still and let you film them. But they are also another good reason for learning good buoyancy control and staying off the reef, because touching the reef kills corals. Off the side of the reef, you can see the lower vis layer over the sand, but with the clearer water mid-depth over the bommie and the rock. We find another cray in a hole. It's always the same when I film. I find loads of crays which are of low interest to me. But the guys actually looking for the crays don't find them, but instead they find wobbegongs and Port Jackson sharks, which are of no interest to them, but great interest to me. I call it Murphy's Law of Cray Fishing and Underwater Photography. Two wobbegongs were seen on this dive by the other divers, but alas, not by us. We head over to the west side of the reef and quickly find yet another nice hole, this time stuffed with crays. They seem to sense that I don't have a cray loop and become exhibitionist, as if to say, nah, 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 can't catch me. Air is getting to the turnaround point for me. Lizzie still has a ton of it, but it's time to head back to the shot line. Back at the boat, anchored on the northeast side, I still have some air and some time, so we hang about a bit in this area before ascent. We stop and watch a school of anchovies, wheeling and diving like a flock of birds in the sky. Until finally it's time to ascend slowly and carry out our three minute safety stop at five meters to ensure nitrogen dissolved in our blood, dissipates out of our blood and through our lungs at a safe rate. Ascend too fast and it can cause bubbles of nitrogen to form. From the gentle calm underwater, we surface into a chop, whipped up by the sea breeze. Our second dive is the place called Dave's Reef. I hadn't dived this reef before. It had a nice wall, but was mostly fairly nondescript. Again, we can see the differences in visibility over the reef. Hidden under a sea urchin, I spot a West Australian nudibranch. This brightly coloured sea slug's scientific name is named after the state, Chromodorus West Australiensis. 
we find another larger school of anchovies. Again, I sit and watch in wonder at the coordination of the school. The small school of bullseyes hides out beneath the ledge on the edge of a six meter wall. I signal to Lizzie, indicating a return to the boat and ascent. She agrees, and we both head up slowly again. On our way, we pass two horseshoe leather jackets, seeming to dance around each other. There is often an inverse relationship between how calm the surface is and how calm it is underwater. Days with long, slow, glassy-looking swells look calm on the surface, but those slow, long-period waves are powerful and reach down deep, throwing you around. By contrast, very short, wind-driven chop makes the surface very rough but calm underneath. We hope you found it interesting. Please join us again on Aquatic Australia and our sister channel, Aquatic Earth. Please like, share and subscribe or follow and tell your friends. Let's take a look at the still photos from the day. Thank you.